Hello, everyone. My name is Moses Kamibaru. I'm the founder and CEO of Dot Savvy, a digital marketing agency. I'm also a content creator, influencer, blogger, and somebody who basically has been writing about all things technology for the better part of 15 years on my blog, MosesKamibaru.com. When it comes to the year ahead with DX5, I think this is undoubtedly the year of generative AI. Already we're seeing the transitions, the disruptions that are happening across industries, across sectors, even in that space that we work in, which is digital marketing, we're seeing a huge debate online regarding the fact that many organizations today, for their marketing purposes, are using AI-generated creative and also copy for their content. Now, for me, I tend to think that when it comes to the inflection point between AI and everything else that is happening in the world, and more specifically Africa, this is going to be a transformational moment. In fact, if you listen to a lot of the conversations happening online by the likes of, say, Jensen Huang, who's the CEO of a company called NVIDIA, who create an incredible range of chips that are used for AI-related um, workloads in data centers and so forth, and also, of course, the founder and former CEO of Microsoft uh, by the name of Bill Gates, a lot of the conversations seem to be gravitating towards what does it mean when it comes to AI in the concept of the fact that it's going to actually be bigger than the very internet itself. And I think already we can see the transformations happening around the fact that AI and specifically generative AI is changing a lot of jobs and roles in the marketplace, not just globally, but even right here in Kenya. And the main thing I see happening is that we really want to get to a point where rather than fighting AI, we're looking at AI as being a transformational opportunity in very much the same way that the internet was, especially for markets like Kenya and those in the rest of Africa. And for me, the main thing I want to say here is basically that you don't want to get into a situation where you give a human a robot's job, all right? We want to think about AI as an enabler, as something that is able to support you, something that's able to streamline how you work, and more importantly, give you that competitive advantage as a business or as an individual so that you can be more productive and able to achieve more within the workplace. And more importantly, what you're able to do as a business, specifically within the focus areas. When we think about generative AI in the concept of what's happening globally, I think there's several things that we need to think about that actually make it a great opportunity. For me, I've been studying this space for a while. And more importantly, I've come up with what I think are the key principles around what makes AI so successful when you think about the year ahead. And to do this, I've come up with something called FESBEC, which is an acronym for faster, easier, simpler, smarter, better, and also cheaper. When you start to use AI for all sorts of things, think about the speed, yeah? You're able to take AI and use it as a way to speed up the process of delivering specific outcomes. Many a times when I'm using softwares like, say, ChatGPT, I've noticed that I'm able to prompt it and ask it to do things that typically I am able to do as a person, but maybe it would have taken me an hour, maybe two hours, maybe three. And basically, you're able to use this tool to enter your prompt and do what normally would have taken you a significantly longer period of time and do it in a much faster way. And that means basically as a person, as a business, as an organization, you're able to be much more productive in the sense that you are literally able to increase the volume of work that you're actually able to deliver on a day-to-day -day basis. The second thing is ease or easier. And I think for me, easier speaks to the idea that the kind of things that typically were very hard to do or almost impossible to do, AI gives us the ability to actually make it a lot easier. And I think, especially for instance, if you look at the way some are using AI for doing creative assets for marketing and advertising, yeah, the ease with which you're able to prompt it and it gives you a creative outcome that you're then able to use for your marketing and other purposes, demonstrate that that ease of use, so that making things a lot easier for those uh, workers in the workplace is very significant. Thirdly, um, we want to also talk about um, the ability uh, for things to be simpler, all right? So again, when it comes to the work that you're doing using AI, it simplifies the way things are done. It makes it a lot faster and easier, but also just makes it simple. And I think this is profoundly important, especially when we are so inundated with so many things coming at us in terms of content information, that anything that makes our work actually easier, is, is or rather uh, simpler, is much more important than anything else. Thirdly, smarter, and I think this is really profound because what you find in the war for talent, um, if an AI is able to actually make somebody smarter, and I don't mean that literally, but AI has the ability to almost act as a second brain. And that is why, for instance, when you look at tools like Microsoft's uh, Copilot, 
Um, these are tools and capabilities that they're building into their products and services that actually make the person using them actually to some extent smarter. And I think this is profoundly important because what it means is that somebody who might have been an average performer can actually become an excellent performer when they start to leverage AI in the work that they do. So think about the fact that you know, AI gives us almost an opportunity to actually tap into intelligence uh, that is capable through these platforms to make somebody actually uh, significantly better uh, at the work that they actually do. Um, when it comes to uh, better uh, as part of the Facebook approach, um, basically what I have noticed with AI within the future of work and the concept of the workplace is that actually the outcomes or rather the things that people are doing actually improve significantly so that they're better than what a person would have done on their own. So think about the possibility or the opportunity to actually uh, improve and make things better uh, in terms of the productivity, make the work better in terms of the final outputs in a way that was not possible in a pre-AI era. And then lastly, cheaper, right? When you start using AI for a variety of tasks and tools and activities within the workplace, uh, generally um, the ability to achieve more and do more and all the things that I've said earlier, ultimately translate into more affordability or rather making things cheaper so that the individual or the organization is actually able to produce more things or deliver more outcomes at a far lower cost. When you bring all those things together in Facebook, basically what we're saying is that, you know, you're basically looking at, um, uh, you know, being able to do much, much more, much faster, much simpler, uh, empowering people within the workplace using these technologies to achieve things that were incredibly impossible uh, without the era of AI. So I've talked a little bit about Facebook, which is the methodology or the framework that I think is best uh, understood in terms of the benefits that it gives uh, any organization or individual who's trying to get the benefits out of generative AI. But more importantly, I think it's important to sort of look and see what are the key steps or the approach that you might use uh, to bring AI into your life as an individual in terms of the work that you do, but also as an organization so that you can get the full benefit of what AI is. I think the first place where you need to start is you need to audit and sort of start to understand how are you operating as an organization. And then you think about AI, AI is a cross-cutting opportunity, meaning that if you're looking at things like HR, if you're looking at how you do procurement, if you're looking at how maybe you create content for social media, if you're looking to how you run maybe your technology platforms in terms of monitoring and evaluating things, to what extent are you using these uh, AI, uh, the current processes, uh, which are probably very manual and human-based, uh, whereas you're able to then introduce AI as an opportunity to sort of streamline those processes. So being able to sort of get a baseline, I think, is the most fundamental step. Trying to understand where are we today, how are we currently operating as an organization, and where area, which areas of our business or organization can we start to bring AI-related tools, uh, methodologies, and platforms to actually streamline those processes. So case in point is I know one organization today, when they're getting applications uh, for people in certain jobs, they're actually using an AI platform to... Uh, retrieve or receive these uh, job applications. The AI system is then able to sift through thousands and thousands of applicants and actually surface maybe say the top 20 applicants for that particular position. It then goes into an automated process that allows them to then actually give them a competence-based test. Uh, again, AI driven that is able to then score and establish uh, out of those 20 candidates, which ones are the ones most likely or most ideal to actually interview. So if you look at that process, you're seeing, first of all, from people submitting their CVs uh, all the way to um, them actually being sort of graded and scored, and then up to the point where they're interviewed, you're seeing a lot of man hours essentially have been compressed in terms of time and process to the point where it's actually fairly simple. Uh, I know another instance where when it comes to actually assigning or giving work uh, to the production team that's doing work within a technology business, uh, what they're doing is using technology to manage sort of the process flows uh, in terms of how work is then assigned, uh, delivered, and even tested before it's actually put into production. Um, other instances where you see this is also in the area of maybe strategy formulation, uh, where organizations are starting to use AI as one of the foundations in terms of actually how they think through where their business is and where they want it to be, and using tools like ChatGPT to actually start to come up with strategies and plans that allow them to become more competitive and more successful over time. So really starting off with the audit, starting to look for those sort of intervention points where uh, you're able to see where the gaps exist and which technology platforms are there.
if I'm to allude, say, to our space uh, in the digital marketing space today, there's a massive debate happening around uh, creative assets for marketing and advertising. And what we're seeing is that a lot of large organizations, and I'll just give Safaricom as an example, I think in the last few months, rather than going out and shooting models and doing scenes for their advertising campaigns, are actually using creative assets that are generated through generative AI to run their advertising campaigns. If you think about that, the amount of effort and money required to do that in the traditional uh, or conventional sense is something that would cost you millions of shillings. But by using creative assets that are then produced using uh, various AI uh, platforms, uh, you find that you're not just uh, achieving a cost saving in terms of the creative assets. Uh, you might even find in some instances that those creative assets coming from AI might even in fact be better looking uh, than what you'd be able to do in a traditional sense, or even more innovative in terms of how you're able to produce that. So you start to see all these intervention points. It could be marketing, it could be HR, uh, it could be even in areas like procurement. Many, many AI companies are mushrooming into this space and starting to build that capacity. One thing I see as a massive uh, driver going forward is going to be sort of the infusion of AI into tools that we're already using. In fact, just the other day, I was using LinkedIn, and you could see that when you're writing something uh, on LinkedIn as a post, it's actually giving you an AI prompt to ask you if you want it to help you uh, create that content. Again, improving that element of the quality of the output, but also the speed and the time required to generate that outcome. If you look at Microsoft and what they're doing with Copilot, uh, which is now essentially working across the uh, Microsoft 365 products, another great example where AI is essentially living within these platforms that are already familiar to us and are now making us being able to operate faster, easier, better, you know, simpler, smarter, and cheaper than how we've always done these things traditionally. So I tend to think that the way AI is going to become uh, sort of uh, pervasive and ubiquitous across the board in every kind of scenario is really where the transformation is happening. Many tasks and many things that humans had to do themselves are now essentially available to you within these platforms and some of these AI tools and uh, systems that are going to make life a lot simpler and a lot better for everyone. And the beauty of what I said earlier, which is never give a human a robot's job is this. If there are tasks that traditionally were done by people that now can be done through AI, allowing those same people to do things that are more meaningful, more entertaining, more interesting, more professionally gratifying in a way that allows them to get the full benefit of their capabilities and skill sets, then ultimately AI becomes an enabler so that those lower level functions, those things that can be automated, simplified, faster, easier, better, and so forth, uh, really do become uh, the foundation of the future in terms of what work is going to look like. So let's not give people and the way people in the workplace and the workforce uh, the wrong tasks that could be automated and done through AI, but rather let's look for opportunities to create those efficiencies, uh, those 10 exchanges in terms of how we are delivering our work and how we are operating as businesses and organizations and really tap into that AI opportunity to ensure that in the year ahead that we can actually become much, much better organizations and also individuals in terms of what we are achieving in the workplace. When I think about the predictions that I have for the future of work in an AI first world, some of the things that come to mind from a digital marketing perspective for me and number one, I think in the area of content creation or generation, we're going to see a lot of organizations in marketing and other areas using a lot of the AI tools that are available today to generate um, beautiful creatives, beautiful narratives uh, to actually produce um, uh, the content that they're going to use online. I think we're going to see a proliferation of no code and low code platforms for building things like mobile apps as well as websites. We're going to see a scenario where you go into these systems, you prompt, and this thing will actually build for you an entire website or mobile app using uh, generative AI. I see uh, definitely uh, opportunities around uh, spaces like how we actually manage projects. Uh, there are going to be questions around whether you actually need a human to manage a project, whereas an AI potentially will be able to oversee and help you sort of streamline and deliver specific outcomes. Already in the software development side of the things that we do, uh, we're seeing that uh, a lot of the co-pilot tools, uh, especially platforms like Microsoft are using uh, to actually streamline the process of how you develop uh, software, uh, and this also can be touched upon with tools like ChatGPT. 
when it comes to advertising, which is where you're running campaigns and looking to sort of set budgets and determine how best to run your advertising campaigns, we're starting to see again a proliferation in 2024 of tools and AI-generated capabilities that are actually taking the workload that used to be done by people and automating that into the platforms that you use for running ad campaigns online. So again, we're going to see a streamlining and optimization of how uh, digital advertising campaigns are also generated. When it comes to things like video content, we're also seeing, again, AI is starting to create a lot of original content uh, that we're able to then build into our campaigns that wasn't there possibly before. So again, rather than going out and shooting uh, video production type content, we're going to see uh, animations and those sort of things being generated uh, through AI platforms. I think another area that takes a lot of time in our area or our industry uh, when it comes to digital marketing is the area of reporting or analytics. And we're seeing again uh, the tools that advancing and improving to the point where a lot of the things that used to be done by people uh, are now being automated and streamlined and also to the point where the reporting and the analytics actually surface opportunities for improvement without you having to interrogate the data. It's automatically being presented to you. So more and more, we're going to see that also happening within the background. And again, I think when you start to think about other ways of interacting with customers um, within a sort of a digital marketing space, let's think about customer experience. We're going to see Things like chatbots are becoming increasingly more intelligent as they tap into AI capabilities uh, to actually streamline that engagement uh, with various uh, customers and stakeholders in an automated manner on things like mobile apps and websites. So ultimately, um, also when we come to things like social media, uh, I anticipate that there's going to be a lot of new opportunities and possibilities made possible uh, using AI-generated content, but also AI-generated uh, intelligence within these platforms. So ultimately, those are my predictions for 2024 when it comes to the future, uh, and more importantly, when it comes to the future of work uh, within the context of an AI world. Thank you very much.